Welcome to my channel. This is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up. How y'all doing? Welcome to another episode. We're here with Lawrence Eggleton. Um, Eggleston. 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 <laughs> he started uh, stocks when he was 17. Um, he's been doing it for like the last five, six years. He kind of blew up the last couple of years and um, he's giving the game out for free. He started Black Wall Street Originals. Um, he's here uh, mentoring and he's here with all his mentees in Houston. So he blessed us to come on the podcast. How you doing, man? Man, I'm great, bro. I'm loving Houston. Um, had a chance to, you know, really sit down, get some food at the Breakfast Club yesterday morning with my fiance. So that was good. Got a chance to really connect with a lot of people in Houston that have been following me. Um, a lot of my students in my program, Black Wall Street Originals. So it's just kind of good to be here and give back. Um, I came to Houston last time in July, July 16th of 2021. Um, it's just good to be in the city. I, I like the city. Think about potentially maybe buying a house down here. Um, but I'm going to solidify something in Atlanta first and then probably move down here as well, too. So I like the city. I like the vibe. Um, it's been a good time here. That's cool. Oh, man, it's not cold over here, do you? <laughs> I'm going to be honest now. I'm, I'm really from New York. I know they see I got the shorts on. Yeah, you, it, to, you know, Houston weather, it's it's 40 degrees outside. It should go down to 30. Mm. For us, that's freezing. Yeah. Like, we don't yeah. ever get that cold. And it just kind of be, it, yesterday I think it was like, what, 60, 60 something degrees? And it was like, yeah. you would be a little bit hot. I had a sweatsuit on yesterday. It was a little bit hot. Today it's a little bit, I mean, it's a little bit chilly and cold, but I got the hoodie on. So shout out to World Vision. Them guys blessed me with this. So, yeah. Yeah, man. You can tell you can tell from Europe from up north. For sure. <laughs> it's, it's not cold at all. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, good, man. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Like we I like to start in the beginning because you, you want to give people an mm -hmm. idea of who you are and, and and your your trials, your tribulations, what you've mm -hmm. overcome, and then uh, a little bit about where you want to go uh later. So yeah. um you we, just sec a second ago you're talking about, you know, you had been dealing uh in your industry for the past six years. Mm -hmm. So and um but before I asked you that, I asked you how old you were. Mm -hmm. And he said you were 22? I'm 22, yeah. 22 years old. So if somebody say six years at 22 is an accomplishment, because a lot of times 22-year-olds aren't doing anything yeah, that's crazy, as to yeah. what you're doing. So yeah. uh, tell us where you started. Honestly, I started really, um, really paying attention to economics. So my senior year in high school, one of the biggest things that I was supposed to learn, obviously, was economics your senior year in high school. So one of the things that I focused on was studying world economics instead of just U.S. economics. So as I understood economics, I was able to understand the stock market better. So I started to understand the stock market better because I understood how money worked. When I studied world economics, whether it was in Europe, China, whether it was here in America, the same principles and things were in place. You have systems. You have the Federal Reserve Bank that controls the monetary policy and our money supply. And these things dramatically in what? Affect our stock market. So you seeing that the wealthiest people was people who invested in the stock market and people who invested in real estate. So, you know, the stock market was the path that I personally chose because it made the most sense for me. Um, you know, I was 14 years old. I was, you know, sweeping up at a barbershop, getting paid a little bit. 15 years old, I got my first job, real job, where I was working at a restaurant. And I always had good saving habits. A lot of people, especially where I'm from in Atlanta, uh, particularly lived outside in Stockbridge, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? These kids, you know, they got $350,000 houses, $500,000 houses, two-parent households, but they want to act like they really got to sell drugs. You really got to do all this. To, like, well, you ain't from the hood. Mm -hmm. Like, you ain't struggling. <laughs> like, you really got opportunities to get a job at a decent place, a Smoothie King, wherever, make a good amount of money as a kid with no bills, no real liabilities. And really, I was... Looking at that at 15 years old, I can work for a couple of years, have some cash flow. If I study this and take my time, then I have money to invest. So, boom, I opened up my brokerage account the day I turned 18, October 12, 2017. Mind you, I had already been studying what the stock market entailed. I had already been studying the economics, so I was knowledgeable. Now I went ahead and made my first investments in ETFs. 
-hmm. which are exchange traded funds where you purchase a basket of stocks. So instead of me going out there individually trying to be a stock picker, I just bet it overall on the stock market, on the total stock market. So what I tell people is that was my first, you know, start for me. And it was really the work ethic. I always looked at a job as just the ability to fund what I'm trying to do. And I always tell people like, never look down on having a job. Mm -hmm. Always look at your job as the ability to now you have income, you have cash flow coming in to now invest in assets. You say your ideal, like for having a job, your ideal time li limit is like five years. Well, why do you feel like it's five years? Um, <clears throat> I feel I feel like I feel like in five years potentially, if you haven't if you've been at a job for five years but you haven't really taken that money and invested it in some form of assets, but you're just pretty much having that job to just live, spend bills, make ends meet, it really doesn't really make sense. Can you paint out like a blueprint, like mm -hmm. break down each year what people need to be doing? Yeah. You know, five years process to get in the stock market and to mm -hmm. like, you know make it happen. Yeah. So one of the things I would say is is that first year. And it really depends on the demographic of age. I think I'm probably speaking from like 17, 18 years old. So I'm gonna kind of move it up a little bit to even someone who might be my age right now that's looking to get started. Okay. So someone who's 22 to 23 years old, you're probably just coming out of college, um, potentially might still be in college. One of the things that I would say is cash flow is key and focus on the least amount of debt. One of the things that happens is, is we get caught in this culture trap. Mm -hmm where we think everything is about show me your value, especially one of the difficult things is I'm gonna speak for kings and I'm gonna speak for queens. Kings, stop thinking that you gotta show off everything that you can buy. Mm -hmm. That's one of the toughest, that's one of the things that will keep you broke and will keep you in that trap. Why? Because you're trying to show everything that you can go out here and buy, I can buy this, buy that. Mm -hmm. With money that you might've gotten from refund checks, money you might've gotten from working these jobs, these hard labor jobs, warehouse jobs, there's nothing wrong with working that job. But if you're gonna go work a hard labor job, like a warehouse job and have little to no liabilities, come on guys, gotta be smarter. So year one, you need to maximize as much cash flow as possible. And I say in year one, do something that you never wanna do again. So for me, it was my year one was when I turned 18, I got a second job. Mm -hmm. And I worked at one point 40 to five days straight with no off day. You still with your parents? I mean, your moms? Uh, nah, so I left my mom's house when I was 17 okay. and never never went back. Do you recommend it? Um, I think I think to each his own as far as that situation. Now, yeah. let me say this. It's be circumstantial. It's circumstantial. So for me, I, like I'm adopted. So I'm originally adopted. My mom and my da ad my dad adopted dad split when it was when I was like eight years old. So it was a lot tougher on me. I had to make the decision like, yo, my mom, she needed to, you know what I'm saying? My mom was trying to make ends meet. You know, she wasn't able to work. She was getting a paid a $1,900 check for my two little sisters who are adopted too, because they had disability. Plus my dad was paying child support to her. So I knew how can I take this burden off my mom? Boom, I went to college and boom, I still stayed on what I was trying to do. But college was something, like I said. So I personally say that one of the main things is if you take a look at other cultures, they don't send their kids right out the door at 18. That's true. Mm -hmm. I think that if you could stay as home as long as possible, even 21, 22, 23, you know, 24, that's not a bad thing mm -hmm. because that can allow you to build up as much capital as possible. Now, when these kids are going and working at these warehouses or working some of these hospitality leisure jobs, they're saving on their income and then they now can invest. And so that transition makes it a lot easier and then also that debt isn't as high. So that's what I would say. Um, if I had the ability to do that, I would have done that. I just didn't have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. So you know how people be like, oh, you should do this. Like, nah, if I had the ability to potentially do that, you get what I'm saying? Maybe I would have taken advantage of it. But I would say that the lessons that I learned were definitely things that I needed to learn. So that's what I would say. That's a whole nother subject. He, <laughs> yeah. I agree with everything he said. It's a whole nother subject when you get into the culture of, of minorities. Yeah. Um, but but does, does that fuel you uh, fuel you as far as like what you don't want to have? You don't want to be in that situation as 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 you become an adult, like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier, you have a fiance. Yeah. So eventually you may have a family yourself. So those those fuels uh, for me, I have those same fuels or I don't want, I don't want to live like this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ever be in the same situation. So at that, at that point, you know, you know what you don't want or what you mm -hmm. want to improve in your lifestyle mm -hmm. going forward. So maybe when your child is 17 
and you have that first argument with him, and he's a man, and he wants to he wants to buck up at you, then maybe maybe you think twice about what you say to him. Exactly. So he stays there till twenty two. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, now nah, this is definitely what I would say. So when it comes to me, as far as like getting started, I just tell people like year two really maximize your the amount of money that you're putting in because after year one, you should have a decent amount of savings. You should have now. Year one is the most important because you need the education. So a lot of people are trying to fast track this and not really get the education. And the education is so important. And a lot of people are saying, okay, I had an information. But you see what's happening is, is that people are getting information and education, but there's no application. Mm -hmm. So there's no change in compensation. You see, you had an education, but with no application, you aren't going to increase your compensation. And that's what's really happening. So year two, now it's time to apply as much as possible. Year one is your foundation, just like your rookie year in the NBA. That's your foundational year. Now, year two is like, okay, what step can you take it? Shout out to Joe Burrow. He's done that. Education, then take it to what? The application, mm -hmm. and now changing your compensation. Now, after that, in year two, what are some of the integral details that I personally would say someone should be taking in that step in process? Year two is probably where you might face that you ever been if you ever been out in the ocean sometimes there's a wave that comes through mm -hmm. year two you might be breaking off drifting from what the crowd might be trying to do and so don't let that noise start to creep in as you start to get in that year two type mode so now you've developed the savings so you have that cash on hand and now you have that education so now you're feeling a little bit good but then you start to drift off and you start to think potentially, hey, let me go spend, let me go do this, let me go do this, instead of being focused. So distractions. So I also would say education as far as learning fundamental analysis and how to evaluate a business from a stock perspective, learn how to evaluate businesses. So that's what I would say about year two, learning how to evaluate a business, you had a foundation, but then also now starting to deploy capital, starting to make longer term investments. You see, the earlier you get started, the easier it is. So I always tell people to keep a long-term perspective. Yes, you can make short-term money in the stock market, but please be patient. It wasn't until my year three that I started doing what's hot now called options trading. I tell people that you have to understand what's happening on the market. You have to understand the economics piece. You have to understand the fundamentals, the technicals. Give yourself time and give yourself grace. After year three, I potentially think that people can now start becoming, in my opinion, people who trade a little bit. And then as year three goes on, continue to compound. And this is now someone who is now, you went from 22, 23 to now 25, 26. So now you may have landed a career or you may have had a business that's grown, whether you're a personal trainer, you're training people, whatever, consultations, life insurance, whatever business that you have in cash flow that you have, now you continue to grow that cash flow. Now you need to be divvying and you need to live below your means. That's one of the most dangerous things is people have to live below their means. Everybody talks about investing, but if you don't even have the money to invest, how can you invest? Mm -hmm. So you have to live below your means. When I say live below your means, I truly mean that. <laughs> I won't say that. I will say that you can enjoy little things in life. I will say that you can actually go out there and get you some Nikes. Go out there and reward yourself. What I'm saying, what I want people to really get is like, don't go out there. If you know that, for example, let's say you have $20,000. do not be going out there spending $5,000. That's 25% of what you have mm -hmm. that you're just spending. So when we take a look at economics, you take a look at gross domestic product, which is a measure of total all goods and services. You probably learned this in school. GDP is made up of 70% of consumer spending. So what does that mean? We take a look at particularly our people, black people. I always tell people that, yo, if you take a look at the statistics from 2000 all the way to right now, black spending power has increased 1.6 trillion, which is up 171%. But black people's net worths have declined. So we started to think about that. It wasn't that we weren't making more money. We have, but we haven't been putting our money into assets Instead, we've been buying and funding other people's passive income and wealth mm -hmm. in forms of designer brands that everyone says, I just want to look good. I just want to this and that. And the problem is, from a psychological perspective, 
you have to be able to block out the noise, especially when it comes to investing long term. To truly be a long term investor, you have to block out the distractions from everyday life. Also, sometimes you have to block out distractions from media who are talking about stock market up, stock market down, stock market is this, stock market is that. You have to be able to block out the noise and develop your own thesis. So that's what I'm saying. So during that five year period, can you date? Like, you said during that five years? I'm going to be honest. I think when you have a great woman at your side, she motivates you to do better. Mm. I think when you have a woman who is a liability at your side, she's going to take away. So as a queen, <laughs> I like this. and as a, as, as a queen, you have to understand, I'm not saying that he can't treat you right, trust me. No, nah, he needs to be taking care of you, courting you on proper dates, he, even a little bit of vacation and this and that. But all this about, I want a bag, he needs to Dior me, all this stuff. I never even heard of that. You get know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, yeah. But, but, it's, but this, these are the things I would say personally for, you know, I'm speaking more so, you probably a little no, bit old. Yeah, yeah but, it's, 40. But, it's like, but it's like in this new age. So no, so no Birkins? No Birkin bags? No Birkin bags. Come on It's now. not that season yet. It's not, it's, and it's not the fact that you shouldn't be, but it's the fact that that Birkin bag money that you probably have in your savings mm. is better off maybe on a multifamily or better off maybe investing in a company. And then it grows. You get all you can get a Birkin bag. Okay, cool. Like that should be a reward. I think too much uh we had this instant gratification. And it's even in everyday life, but then also in investing. We think that we're supposed to invest a thousand dollars and it turns into a hundred thousand like that. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. So I personally say that definitely you can date. Um, I just tell people to remain focused, but have people around you if the energy is aligned. Is she on some like we trying to build? And I think that's where it helps, but not spend all your money on me. It doesn't really make sense long term. Can can you uh can you give some either advice or some ways to avoid what you would call the trap as a, a from your perspective as a young man? Mm -hmm. So what are some things that normally are going to come across the path of a young man, mm -hmm. regardless of regardless of uh you know their situation that can keep them out of the trap? Yeah, I would probably say um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't have no dude friends that are my age. They're older than everybody's me. Older. They're, everybody's older than me. If you see the people that I hang with and I run with, I hang with people who are all in their early 30s and even like around your 40. age, 40. So, <laughs> I'm 39. I, so I just tell people like, that can be the trap. I'm gonna be 100. Like the trap is your homeboys. Yep. The trap is really not just your, not just the women. The trap is more your homeboys. Cause the thing is, the women will tell you that you're wrong, but your homeboys will tell you that you're right. But then also secretly your homeboys will be haters. Mm -hmm. And your homeboys, think about it. I look at this, if I see a, a dude that's always riding around and he has two dudes in the back, that's a red flag for me. Red flag for me. Everywhere <laughs> I go, I move by myself and I move on my own. I just tell people that's the way you have to move as a, as a young man in this type of time, in this type of, you have to move accordingly and stay away from these guys who are trying to get you in trouble, get you to be a scammer, get you to do all these things that you shouldn't really be doing, mm -hmm. and focus on putting yourself in positive circles. So for me personally, I would tell people to stay away a lot from people their age for the most part. And so you're, if you're in your 20s, you can't hang out with people in your 20s. If you're 22 and you're hanging out with dudes who are 22 and who are not on nothing, which are most 22 year old dudes, because what's told to us as men across the board at 15 in high school is to knock everything out the park and just keep doing it, right? That's what we're told. It's okay to do that. And then from a psychological standpoint, we're told continue to do that and we're conditioned to think that life is EV, life, life is fast. Think about it. There were dudes who told me once I crossed the six figure mark to go buy a Tesla. They want you to go buy, go buy that Tesla. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man, get that souped up, get that souped up. But those wow. would be, you get what I'm saying? Like those are your cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. But the moment that that Tesla is no longer there, they're running away. So I always tell people to live for you, do things that you want to do. Do things for you, stop trying to do things to impress other people. And stop trying to do things to impress other dudes, that is, I won't even say the word, but <laughs> that is not the, that is not what you are supposed to be doing. 
So I would tell people, do not be trying to be out here trying to impress other dudes as a as a as a guy. And please do not be falling into the trap of spending all your money to impress a woman. What are some financial um, things that they I I, I I totally agree with you. Your circle, your circle <laughs> totally matters. I had to you know learn that uh, ex- hard the hard way. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I was funny. I looked at a wedding picture of mine mm-hmm. from uh, was I don't year was that 2008 or nine right Mm -hmm. and um there's like 10 guys in my wedding (laughs) and i only talked to two of them now you know and two of them they're they're my brothers so you know (laughs) it's like all the other ones i literally do not communicate with at all and i won't so but going (laughs) forward it's like um (laughs) listen you you those are those are the, the the what i call the social things to avoid what are some financial things they need to avoid? Yeah, so financial things to avoid is getting a $60,000 car and you make 40 bands. Right. Okay. Those are the fi- number one financial. That's probably dudes we want the souped up car. We got dealership have- shouldn't even approve you, right? I thought you were supposed to make how much you, you make. No, for- you can get approved for you, that. The thing is, yeah. the dealership, sh- yeah, so here's. Shit, no, they shouldn't. There, there's a reason why at the gate, when you start your credit, it's pretty good. Yeah. And the thing is, is what it is also is falsify paperwork. A lot of these dudes are falsifying paperwork. Okay. So it's not is. that they're they're not going to the dealership showing they make forty bands. They're going yeah. to the dealership showing they're making a hundred and forty. Yeah, or well, the dealership does. They tell you what, hey man, just put down this and yeah, just put it. down that. Or it's not verified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what happens. So that's the number one trap to avoid. Avoid, avoid that number one trap. Yep, that's the number one trap I can say. And then a second is designer clothes. You are not little baby. You are not gonna. You are not future. You are not these guys. Please stop it. That is the number one, the number two thing to stop doing. Stop, brother. Stop having 10,000 and going into the Galleria here in Houston, Lenox Mall in Atlanta, and spending 20% of what you have. Simple. What about going to the club? Is that cool? Clubs, you got to stay away from clubs. I hate clubs. And let me tell you why I hate clubs. And I despise clubs. Ooh, let's hear this. I despise clubs because what happens is, is that the cost of admission, everybody wants to have a section. Now, think about this. You got to, in order to go to the club, you got to first go to the mall. So mm. the club is like the last stop. Mm, you I need see. the car first. Mm. Then you got to go take the car and go to the mall, get the designer items, get all of that. Then the club is the last stop. At the club is awaiting more issues. Drinking makes you fat. Drinking is not a healthy thing to do long term. Not saying that you can't have a drink every now and then, but moderation. Mm-hmm. Also as well, the distractions, the style type of women that are at the clubs are probably more than likely not women that you should be entertaining. So this is where you find the liability type women. This is where you find the liabilities. <laughs> this is where you find the liabilities. Can you buy me a drink? <laughs> Can you give me this? That's where you find the Birkin. I need the Birkin right now. Dior me. Dior me. Yep. And there's like nothing wrong with... Ha- there's nothing wrong with having nice things guys mm. you can have that deal but we always want everything up on the front end i look at a lot of those liabilities like jamarcus russell he robbed the oakland raiders mm. where he took 36.5 million dollars up front mm. but you didn't go out there and perform mm. but you we we want all this money for our con- we want all this money up front imagine that's why what the nfl had to change those rules they were giving too many players upfront money. The signing bonuses. Signing yeah. bonuses were crazy. Who was remember signing boat? And then you weren't going out there and performing because there was no incentive. Mm. So we had us. We feel like, oh, I get everything up front, get everything up front, and we get lazy. So we we'll avoid avoid the cars. <clears throat> Wait, that's all the fun. No cars, no clothes, no. Women. Yep. Uh. So so then let's say for example the average guy. Mm-hmm. What what what. What should they be doing? Honestly, I would say the average guy, you could still find a great quality woman. Go to some colleges. Go find some sisters. There's some quality women out there that are doing some amazing things. But you can't be worried about just trying to always get in those type of women's pants. I'm going to be honest. Uh, Barack, Barack did it. There's some quality, beautiful women out there. So not just going to say colleges, but also women who are on their boss stuff too. Mm-hmm. Women who are on their boss stuff, entrepreneur stuff. Yep. You have some great black women out here that are doing amazing things. So don't get it confused. Yep. There's a lot more greatness 
than a lot more of those trials and tribulations, to be mm. honest. Yeah. So I will say that. So as a young man, the first priority should be, was, not that, but the first priority should be you first. What systems do you have in place for you? Identifying, okay, taking a look. What investments am I looking to get? What jobs am I looking to work at for, for right now mm. to be able to fund those investments? Am I going to the gym? Getting a Planet Fitness membership. Mm. Challenge yourself, hey, stay in the gym. Not saying you gotta go every day of the week, two to three times a week, even if you go once or twice, whatever. You're in the gym at least a minimum, you know? So I would say that. Also, I would say traveling, seeing things kind of sometimes from other points of view, mm. doing a little bit of traveling here and there so you get to see things from different points of view and different ways of life. I think that's probably the biggest thing. One of the things that I did when I was 18, you know, I had never, I had traveled a lot on the East Coast, but I had never really been on a plane. So I went to DC, I went and visited, I went to different cities and I take a look and analyze their culture and I study. So I would say that is like, that can be something that could really help you kind of open up your mind. I also would say as a young man at this time, some of the more things that you should be doing is reading. Spend time, a lot of times reading. I would say that's probably one of the, that's probably is the biggest thing that separated me. My freshman year of college, I spent a bunch of time in my dorm room reading, mm. reading, reading, reading. So that's critical. But then reading and applying the information that you're reading. And yeah, that's what I would say. Um, that all, all that yeah. stuff spells discipline. So you, you, you strike me as an individual who's got a lot of discipline, a lot of, you started early. Most, most of the time, uh, young men, especially growing up in urban areas, uh, are not going to get to that point in their life mm -hmm. until they've experienced some some, some tribulation. Yep. You mm -hmm. know, so they went through their 19s, their 20s, their 21s. Maybe they started college. Maybe they dropped out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they got a job. By all this, you know, they may have had a child by then. By you know, mm -hmm. one of these uh, liabilities, <laughs> um, <clears throat> have have has a car. You know, does the does the shoes, does the, all the all the stuff that we mm -hmm. normally do, um, wheels, and then they start to realize that maybe they've been spending their wheels for the past, let's say, another ten years. Mm -hmm. They're twenty eight now, right? Mm -hmm. Twenty nine. Mm -hmm. Usually, that's when the normal person starts to get it together, unless they've had some direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably what your what your mission is is to give direction. Give direction. Yeah. Did you have any mentors during this process? I personally would say that I necessarily did not have any mentors at all. I didn't have any mentors. I personally would say that more so outside of mentors, it was the information. Mm -hmm. um, it was the information that I was given through reading, um, through studying. I also would give a shout out to Gary V. It was something that like really clicked for me. I love Gary V. Um, Gary Vee, the way that he would approach, or well, assuming not he would approach, people would approach him with mm. these different various issues and problems. And he would just tell them, just get started, just do it. Like, mm. and that's kind of like the mindset. Mm. Once I started watching those videos, I also would say Eric Thomas as well too. The Lion and the Gazelle, those different things. Mm. Um, those two people right there, I definitely say would, would be things that open up my, kind of like my mindset. And then as, as I progressed, I just continued to document my process and I kept a journal and I kept information and I, you know, evaluated myself. So that would be personally what I would say. How'd you get connected with EYL? Uh, to be honest, so I got connected with EYL. Uh, shout out to my man, Jamal, um, sales and marketing at EYL. I actually, um, me and him, we actually met on Clubhouse and we connected. And I sat down with him, you know, I helped him and I taught him a lot about options. I taught him a lot about just the market in general. I took a look and showed him kind of what some of the things he was doing, like probably a little bit wrong that could easily be corrected. Got connected with him. And then boom, after that, once I got uh, connected with him, you know, me and him became really tight in April of 2021. I was in, I live in ATL, so they pulled up and they had like a networking party. You know, I popped up, he showed me love, he invited me out, you know, I came in free. You know, just sat down and, you know, just really just, you know, just really just read and, you know, just chill, you know, that night. Um, you know, a lot of people came through. Wall Street Trapper, Him 500, Nehemiah Davis, uh, Troy and Rashad was there and just connected with people and just vibed. I didn't really talk to people that I'm not really, I'm not the groupy person. Mm -hmm. So I just sat back and, you know what I'm saying, just enjoyed the vibe and, you know, chopped it up with my mans. And then, you know, they had known that I had been teaching, et cetera. Um, and I had been teaching for, you know, since 2018. 
And I got a call probably in June. I got a call in June. It was about the second week of June. And basically, uh, Jamal was like, yo, can you teach a class for EYL University? I was like, sure, when? He's like, 20 minutes. 20 like, minutes. Yeah, I'm like, good. okay, boom, yeah. fire the laptop. Like, I stayed ready. I stayed with presentations, PowerPoints. It's really nothing. So, boom, Troy was along there. It was like 350 people on um, that call that time. And boom, I prepared. I was already, I mean, he called me 20 minutes before. It was teaching at 8 p.m. It was 7.40. Hopped on, fired up the lap, literally opened up the laptop, threw on, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of something, and then boom, from there. Got in connected. I was teaching one-offs pretty much through June, July. I just kept teaching one-offs. Then in October of 2021, I did a special with them on their YouTube channel. So it was actually the the day I buried my grandfather. So my granddad, he died October 16th. So I was actually in my hotel room that time that I did that YouTube with EYL, that one that the crypto video that had like quarter million views. I was actually in my hotel room that I had, it was just me. I'm um, at flown up there to bury my grandfather. And yeah, I had buried him like three hours ago. And then boom, I hopped on and I did that. And then from there, they was like, man, like, it's crazy, like your intellectual, your knowledge, and you know what I'm saying? People already, they already seen that, but it was like like the, the the earners like really appreciate me and definitely shout out to the EYL earners. Um, shout out to Troy and Rashad. And then as well, even from there, we did another special in December of last year. Uh, so like two months ago, we did another special and it was me talking about options and I taught an options class with Troy and Rashad and you know, they already, Troy hit me up. He's like, bro, we want to make you a full-time EYL university professor. So, you know, I'm, I'm one of their, I'm, I'm their, you know, full-time EYL university professor. So I teach twice a week. I teach on Mondays at 12 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 uh, a.m. Central Time. And then on Wednesday, I teach at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then 5 Central Standard Time. So for me, you know, it's really about teaching. And, you know, I came into the university and I love teaching the earners. Cause they like they love the information, and they're going to actually go out there and apply the information. Mm -hmm. I've taught a lot of people over, uh, you know, over and over again, and a lot of people have not necessarily taken the information and applied it. One thing I can say about Earn Your Leisure and the EYL students, they apply the information. You see, cool, our man. people, yeah. our people, we can't be, st we can't still be stuck in this. Like I just like being around. Mm -hmm. You see, our people are so used to being fans of Beyonce and being fans of rappers, this and that. Sometimes people just like being around your space. Don't be that person. Don't be the person that just likes being around, mm -hmm. being around. <laughs> Don't just be another number. You get what I'm saying? Don't have that type of mindset. Really come in and really take advantage of learning. Take advantage of the information and then go apply it in your real life. That's what I would say. Man, congrats. Appreciate stuff, that. Good stuff. It's like you, you know, you you took a you took a relationship, you cultivated it, mm -hmm. and then your work spoke mm -hmm. for itself. Yep. And so you know, it seems like you're, you're probably a really good teacher. No, nah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, how'd you meet your fiance? When did when did you realize she was the one? Man, honestly, bro, it's crazy. So <clears throat> I actually met her. I actually met her last year. So. I personally would say that. Um, so you only known her for like a year. Yep. Yep. Wow. So I personally would say, honestly, bro, when it comes to when it comes to that question, as far as when did you know, I would say kind of like the difference in behavior and the ability. She was like the the first girl that I was ever with that wasn't just trying to be with me. I won't even say even about money. I won't even necessarily say that, but actually just let me work. She respected my grind and my hustle and was an addition. She came, like, I bring her to every city I go to. Now when I'm traveling, teaching, you feel me? Like, she's calm. She's supportive. She's there. You see, what I tell people is, is that a queen, she's supposed to provide that peace. A lot of queens out here think that the rah, 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 rah is going to work. It is not going to work. <laughs> the more that you're peaceful, now, let me say this. I'm not saying that us kings don't, some of us kings don't give them the reason to do that. Let me say that. Say that. Us kings have to do a better job of letting our queens rest in their femininity. So my job as a king is to let my queen rest in her femininity. And that's what I do a good job of. Now, 
on the back end, what do I get in response to that? I get a queen that's resting in her femininity and she adds value. So she adds an amazing amount of value and support. How am I able to be Lawrence Eggleston and be the best version of what I call myself the Panther is because of her. So that's why I was saying, like, when the, she adds value, when it, whenever a woman truly adds value to your life, really appreciate that. And that's something that doesn't really come often. So you got to lock that down. <laughs> Congrats again. Yes, sir. <laughs> cool. Yep. What do you... Um, <laughs> Obviously, you study the markets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you're stood in the markets. You, you, you know, you're in the financial uh, sector. What do you predict 2022 to be like? I think 2022 is going to be a shakeup year. I believe 2022 is going to be a shakeup year. I believe that for the patient, there will be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. There will be an opportunity for the patient. If you're a long-term investor, some doors will be open mm -hmm. for you to be able to deploy capital. And some of the investments that you make this year will drastically change your life and affect your life in 2025 and 2030. I believe that over the past two years, we've dealt with an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Nothing just goes in a straight beeline up forever. Yep. There will be pullbacks. Yep. And I think people have to understand that. Companies that are not positive cash flow. And what is positive cash flow? Companies that actually make money. Some people may say, well, this company made revenue. That means they made money. No. no. Companies that actually bring home a net income. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of companies out here that have been doing a lot of borrowing over the past two to three years because interest rates have been so low. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people to think outside of just yourself as an everyday person and a consumer. Companies also have been afforded the opportunity and access to very low rates of borrowing capital and funds mm -hmm. to come to market the same way you were able to refinance your house and get 0%, well, you know, very low. Some people 0% rates, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start thinking about these companies have effectively taken a lot of money and necessarily our productivity hasn't went up. You see, the amount of money supply has went up in our country, but the productivity has not went up. It's actually went, went down. down yep. So when we start thinking about that, there has to be some sort of rebalancing. And so the Federal Reserve is something that I always tell people as new investors to study. The Federal Reserve in times of crisis steps in to support and enable our, us, our economic expansion. And so what does that mean? Back in the 2008, 2009 financial crisis, the Federal Reserve stepped in and propped up the market through what is called quantitative easing. And so the Federal Reserve's job with quantitative easing is to pr provide liquidity to the markets. So if you look at that bottom and you look at 2009 to 2015, the market did this. Then we saw a little bit of downward trend because of Ebola. And then if you saw in 2018, we saw the Federal Reserve raise interest rates. That was the last time. So what does interest rates like really mean? How does this really affect people that don't know anything about interest rates? So interest rates are going to affect your car loans. It's going to affect your credit cards. It's going to affect the cost of doing business. So when interest rates are lower, companies really like to do a lot more spending expansion. When interest rates start being increased, companies start to contract. They start to cut budgets. They start to stop with the research and development, maybe spending that they were doing. So things get tighter. And companies that are not having a positive net income, so companies that are making money but then are not actually keeping money and doing what is called return on equity. So return on equity is how much money you actually put back in shareholders' pockets. A lot of these little one-off companies like a Snapchat, like a DocuSign, like a Zoom, like a DraftKings, are spending a lot of money. They make a, a little bit of money, but they're not keeping a lot. Mm -hmm. You see, at Apple and Microsoft, these companies are powerhouses because Apple has 174% return on equity, where DraftKings has a negative 144% return on equity. So that means, effectively, when you're buying a business that loses money, you're actually funding their debt. I want people to start looking at it like that. A business that is not profitable, like Uber, has a net income of negative $3.76 billion. That's crazy. So we start to think about, yes, these companies, yeah, you can go call an Uber right now and they pick you up. But that business is not actually a profitable business. Mm -hmm. Investors like profitable businesses long term. It's not to say that you can't place a trade and make money on an Uber or make money on a loss making business. You can make money on businesses that lose money by trading them short term. When it comes to long-term investing, there's companies like Procter & Gamble. Have you noticed Procter & Gamble's never fallen? 
You notice that Johnson & Johnson is never really falling off, even with all the... When you have a business that generates profit, it's very hard to get rid of those companies. So I tell people to invest in, in long-term and things that are very hard to delete. It, yep. It's, Facebook is down 25% right now. Is that mm -hmm. a buy? Uh, I personally, I always have to say this. <laughs> I got to be, you know, please, I'm not your financial advisor, <laughs> <laughs> all that. But what I will say is this, on a serious note, let's actually factor in what's actually happened here. Let's lay out all the cards. Yeah, this is yeah, this is a this is interesting. This oh, is yeah. a orderly this is a orderly sell off. I want people to understand that Facebook, the app works just fine. I've been getting Instagram notifications just fine. WhatsApp, I'm talking about just fine. I want people to understand what happens here. These are orderly <clears throat> things that happen. Trust me. Imagine just taking a fourth of that table off. That's what happened to Facebook. That's okay. essentially the money that left. Okay. So what I want people to really look at is, is because this. Because of the ads, right? A little bit because of the ads. Part is, is that you have to effectively think about the wealthy who have really owned a lot and made a major, a major amount of money. Think about this. I tell people to think, when it comes to over the past year, you start to think that a lot of short-term money was made, but now you can actually sell and you're not facing that high capital gains tax. So mm -hmm. think about that. Mm -hmm. You're not facing that high capital gains tax. So that's one. Also as well, when you start to take a look at these companies, these companies are what? Like a Facebook is struggling a little bit with the iOS adaption. But I tell people to take a look at something called PE ratios. This is actually how you're actually able to evaluate a company. Typically investors, long-term investors like companies that average in between 15 and 30. Doesn't mean that you can't invest in something that's higher, but sometimes the fundamentals actually, you know, catch up to a business. Facebook now is trading at about a 17, 18 PE ratio. So that is extremely undervalued. So price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Facebook is a company that has little to no debt. Okay. Facebook is a company also that has a major cash reserve as well too. We also know Facebook is known to have a lot of scrutiny. I always tell people to zoom out instead of zooming in. Yeah, it's down 25% today. Where is it going to be at five to 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. This is where I start to, this is where I start to think as a person who only thinks short term, you're looking at just today, mm -hmm. but we have to zoom out and take a look at the entire history of Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we just need to not turn back just about even five months ago. Imagine, you remember when Instagram shut down, WhatsApp wasn't used, the world went crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stopped. Stop. Yep. Like the whole day, huh? Stop. So. <laughs> I personally believe that Facebook would be just fine. Some key areas where I think potentially the stock may go, um, potentially maybe 225. You might even see it go back down potentially to 200. If you're talking about a long-term investor who's buying shares, not options, but shares, actual ownership, I think it'll be attracting at that price. FinTech has dropped like Square and PayPal. Mm -hmm. Is that a buy too? Or no? Let me say this. So, great question. So, same thing with Facebook. When we talk about PayPal, talk about PayPal first. So when we started to think about PayPal, PayPal is a business model. Yes, it's falling from about 309. Now I think it's at 128 last time I looked. Mm -hmm. Looking at PayPal, I will say this, that the business now is trading as if PayPal is worth nothing. So <laughs> when we talk about PE ratios and evaluating, you know, multiples and sales, PayPal only missed their earnings report, EPS, by one cent. Yeah. They only missed it by one cent. This is why I say these are over this. You see now take a look. My PayPal did this the day before Facebook did this. Look at the orderly things that are happening. Don't we kind of don't we kind of see the same kind of orderly? These are quality companies. Yeah, yeah. These are not just no hot GameStop <laughs> AMC type. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? They're these are yeah. they're not, these are companies that are very hard to delete. Very hard to delete. If PayPal would say, hey, we're done, it'd be very hard for them to just say we're done very quickly. Facebook, oh, man, you might be dealing with something a little bit bigger, talking about a delete of that. Yep. So I'm going to say this, that the stock prices have gotten cheaper, but I'll be honest, I took a look at Facebook's EPS. It was like three, I think they did 347. The estimate was like 363. It was a bad miss. Facebook can miss. Sometimes companies miss. Mm -hmm. I turned back the page. PayPal once went five years without missing an earnings report. Once went five years. So you can miss a quarter. Even over the past four quarters, they've only missed one time. Mm -hmm. A company can miss EPS. No company's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
companies have missed EPS and you miss it by one cent and the stock drops 25%. <laughs> that just sounds like, and just think about overreaction. The overreaction. Come on. I mean, it's overreaction, but also fair price, in my opinion, to pay for PayPal. Even the last time that PayPal, I want people to kind of get this. Last time PayPal was this price, PayPal is still is like this same price, one, um, 128. Last time a couple of years back when it was 128 and it's 128 now, mm -hmm. PayPal is still a more valuable business. I want people to get the statement that I'm going to make. PayPal has effectively had more sales, more revenues and earnings over that time period. Mm -hmm. And it's not declined. So PayPal is a more valuable business right now when we talk about sales and the value of the company. So price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Mm -hmm. I also say for a long-term investor and even a new investor, you should love when companies fall out the sky. Yeah. Because all the people that are saying, oh, I don't, I don't want to buy at the top. I don't want to buy at the top. Well, it's you ain't time. buying at the top right now. So yeah. you should actually invite these type of things to happen yep. and then be willing to get in. You have to do the opposite. You see, I like to grab things when no one wants to touch them. People don't want to grab Facebook today. That's what I got to order for their butt. It's like the Warren yeah. Buffett, uh, <laughs> Warren Buffett, uh, fear. I knew, yeah, yeah, buy when people are fearful, yeah. sell when people are greedy. Mm -hmm. When I see too many people start talking about a ticker and it's run too much on the television screen, it's time to get out. Yep. When I see that too much negative stuff is coming out, let me be honest. I, I would say that the best thing as well for me, I learned how to like short term trade in a down market. So I learned how to short term trade really a lot in like mid 2018. That's when I really started taking on the trading aspect of things. So for me, I would say that me trading in the down market, I, I learned how to really catch discounts. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Facebook already fall once from 210 to 130. And there's money to be made when a company falls too. I think that's another thing that people are not thinking about. I look at when a stock falls, I can make money off that company. When you talk about Square, and that's the next that's the next company that you asked me about. Mm -hmm. Square, I have been in some puts on Square since about 220, 240. In and out of puts. Showing people, hey, the different technical terminologies of what how a stock moves. It it's made up of, you know, lower lows and lower highs. Lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. That's how a stock moves in a downtrend. In an uptrend, a stock moves higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Mm -hmm. Now stocks are starting to finally make lower lows and lower highs. And people who are new, who have never seen that, are saying, what's happening? So right now these stocks are in a downtrend and sellers have taken over. So for me, I tell people that the technical aspect of things is just as important. So I tell people, get a, good, get a book, you know, Fred McAllen, uh, Charting and Technical Analysis, really read that book. Charting and Technical Analysis will really show you how to evaluate a stock chart from a longer term investor standpoint. So you have a couple of things there. You have an accumulation phase and that is when shares are being accumulated. So a lot of times when you see that sideways movement and then boom, the public participation over the past two years, we've just been in a public participation phase where everything goes to the heavens. Then what? Oh, no, it's, go ahead. I'm oh, then, then we, then you start to see, that it starts to chop and the stock struggles to make new all-time highs. So notice, you remember how PayPal was struggling up there at 280, 290, 300 to really move higher? You saw how Square was struggling up there to really move higher? Mm -hmm. You saw how Facebook was even struggling up there at that 360, 350 area, 340 it was struggling to really move higher. And then you start a distribution where the wealthy, and it says this in a book, I'll quote the book, the Rothschilds of the world start to sell and those people who are buying are the inexperienced investors mm -hmm. who have no idea what's coming because the euphoria if we now chart an emotional chart of a how a st stock in a cycle moves that public participation phase is also called that euphoria phase so where everyone thinks that it, things only go up then when the distribution phase, those shares start to get distributed, what happens is, is that the capitalization starts to what? It starts to affect people. And so people start to get hurt, margin calls, all of that starts to really, really, really affect these people. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, yo, you have to pay attention to what market phase that you're buying a stock in. The market moves in phases. And this is why I always tell people that you don't want to go out there and be a stock picker. 
because only 22% of stocks actually outperform the market. So you really got a two in a 10 chance to be a good stock picker. Man, that's a lot of good info <laughs> It is right there. It <laughs> is. It's a lot of good info. So you uh, typically <clears throat> hold a class, mm -hmm. not only on, on EYL, but um, mm -hmm. um, you, you hold a class. You're like, that's the reason why you're in Houston. Yeah. So my company, Black Wall Street Originals that I founded in 2018, you know, I started teaching in my college dorm room. <clears throat> I started teaching on my college campus at the time. Um, you know, it's grown to now over a thousand members. And, you know, I've been teaching people the long term, the right way to properly do this. Internet is telling people that you need to be all in options. You need to do this. You need to do that. Instead of showing people how to properly be an investor and take the proper steps first, and then you can always become a trader later and you can hedge your portfolio. So, for me, um, being down here in Houston, I'm on a tour this year that I'm completely funding um, money out of my pocket and where I'm traveling city to city. My first city was Miami in January. This is my second city. At the end of this month, February 25th and 26th, I'll be in Brooklyn. I'm shutting Brooklyn down. Cool. Um, and then, boom, the 10th through 12th of March, I'll be in Philly. So I'm going to some cities that I have members that I've never been before. And, you know, really starting to experience the world from a different lens, a different view. I'm a very personal person. I want to sit down and really show you how to do this myself in your face. Mm. So you know that there's no discrepancies. You know it, who I am. You actually get that feel. And I actually can really help people. Yes, social media is good. IG Live is good. YouTube is good. It's all good. But I like to give that in-person experience and really help people and change people's lives. Can you explain a couple of terms for me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you explain uh, falling wedges and double bottoms? Yeah, so you have a falling wedge pattern. So a falling wedge pattern is a bullish reversal pattern. Wedges are some of the most common chart patterns that an investor will see. A lot of times when you see a falling wedge pattern, it looks like this. It will hit a bottom. An investor and buyer step in for support. And if you see a falling wedge pattern, it can be a good time to buy call options to make money on the uptrend that you're potentially about to see as it breaks out of that wedge. Now, double bottom is very simple. You have a stock that goes up and then it comes down and it hits a level, which is a floor of support. And then it goes back up a little bit, then it comes down again and it forms what is called a double bottom, hits that floor of support and it doesn't break through. A double bottom is a bullish reversal pattern as well too. An investor or a trader may be looking to potentially take call options or purchase a stock off of a double bottom pattern. So it's a bullish reversal pattern. So wedges, which you can be a rising wedge and a falling wedge, a rising wedge looks like this. And when it breaks down and breaks out, the stock moves down. You also have a double top. So you see the stock hits that top right here. Most stocks actually double topped. If you open up Square and if you open up PayPal, you open up Roku, you open up all of these charts and take a look at the weekly and monthly time frames. As a long term investor, you should always be looking at the weekly and monthly time frames. You will see one top here, one top here. A simple chart pattern could have shown you the way of where potentially these stocks were getting ready to move from a technical perspective and not just something on CNBC. And in addition to fundamentals and some of the things that have transpired through the markets. Can you explain the importance of chart reading? Yeah, chart reading is, is vitally important because you want to know exactly where you're actually buying a stock. So a lot of people like you can't just say, well, I know Square got cash app or I know PayPal got PayPal. I know Netflix got subscription. Mm -hmm. I want to buy this business long term. You need to evaluate it from a technical standpoint as well, too. Now, I will say for long term investors, fundamentals matter way more than technicals. But there is still some there still is a need to know technicals to be a long-term investor. But then also as well, guys, I tell people, please do not try to be out here just being a stock picker too. Focus on buying index funds and ETFs. And then as well, you can have some stocks in your portfolio, but don't really like over leverage yourself with having too many stocks and too many tickers. And so, yeah, that's what I would say. Can you explain a uh, bag B statistics and indicators? You said MACD. St yeah, MACB, MAC, uh, statistics and indicators. Yeah, so 
<clears throat> when you're saying when the MACD is a moving average convergence divergence, mm -hmm. so it is a set of you know two lines that are composited of the 12, 26, and 9 EMA. What is the 12, 26, and 9 EMA? It is a exponential moving average. So the 12, 26, and 9 are a day format. So it is the average closing price over those 12 day, 26 day, 9 day. So it's an indicator that, hey, if you see the two lines converge or diverge, so if they converge up top, you'll see momentum in that stock move down. If they converge to at the bottom, you'll see that stock move up. So um, that's pretty much what you see uh, when it comes to the MACD. Now, the number one indicator is price. I always tell people to learn chart patterns, learn how to read candlestick patterns, I think a lot of times people are too focused on having all these indicators on their screen. Um, you don't really need all those indicators, guys, especially when it comes to long-term investing. You need to kind of really make it as simple as possible. Um, you can use a little bit of, you know, you don't really need, you don't really need indicators, I'm be honest. You need to know how to read a naked chart. You need to know how to read a, learn how to read a naked chart. That is probably gonna be the most important thing for you. As far as statistics, um, taking a look and evaluating companies from EPS, earnings per share, revenue. Also, you wanna take a look at you know performance. So take a look at the five-year performance, one-year performance, open up those bigger time frame charts and really focus on, hey, what is the percentage that this company has returned over the past five years? Start looking at those things. And so when you see these drawdowns, I also would say statistics, taking a look, you know, when you see companies draw down, you know, you know 30, 40%, but a company is, you know, positive cash flow and still a growing business, mm -hmm. that can be an opportunity for you to get in. I also would say statistics as well, pay attention to the seasonality of the markets. I would tell people to get the stock almanac book for 2022 and always get it for every year and take a look at, you know, um, the comparisons of history of trends, you know, you know, what does the stock market typically do during this month, et cetera. So you kind of get your idea of where you want to be buying, where you potentially want to be selling, so you just really get some market structure. Um, so numbers don't lie, people do. And remember that in this game. So, yep. Man, there's so much info up there. <laughs> I, th I think I need to join this class. Yeah, me too. To figure out what's going on out here. <laughs> sure. um, well, we appreciate you stopping by. We appreciate sure. you giving us all this information, all this knowledge, especially out to the, to the audience. Um, if this is something that you, that piques your interest, something that you should be and, and want to be doing, um, Make sure you you uh, follow him on Instagram, uh, Lawrence Eggleston. And uh, is that your, that's your Instagram handle in it? Or is so it it's Mr. Lawrence.e. And make sure you spell my name right L A W R E N C E dot E. Mr. Lawrence dot E. There are scam pages out there of me on Facebook where, you know, people are making these scam pages. So that is my only page. And then also Black Wall Street Originals. Yep. Any page that DMs you asking about crypto, asking about sending his money, please ignore that. That yep. is not it's me. A scam. Yep. It's a scammer. So um, tap in. It's a cliche term. Tap in <laughs> and uh, and learn, man. Learn what y'all guys need to be doing at an early age. This is a young man's only 22 years old and uh, he's got his whole life in front of him. So uh, congrats on all the success. Congrats uh, uh, in your in your teaching endeavors. And, uh, man, congrats on life. Congrats on the fiance. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. So uh, we appreciate it. And thanks uh, thanks for joining the show. You got, you, you got like Minority Report? Yeah, we're going to. So, so we do a, a segment at the end. It's called the Minority Report. Mm -hmm. uh, give us your take uh, on what you see the masses uh, moving towards. We know that, you know, Airbnbs are hot. We know mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, Toros are hot. Um, everybody, you know, wants to be a real estate investor. At some point, uh, some people really are, and mm -hmm. some people really aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody wants to wholesale houses. What do you see uh, going forward um, as the market? Do you take in consideration your your expertise and knowledge in the market. Mm -hmm. What do you see going forward in the next one to two years? I would say, um, I would say a lot more people do it in the digital space. I think a lot of people are going to get hurt with the metaverse. I think a lot of minorities are going to get hurt with the metaverse. In its first iteration, let me say this, in its first iteration, not to say that long term, but I think in the first iteration of it, I think that that's a hot wave that people are trying to jump on in our community. They're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. um, I also would say that I think that people are going to continue to invest in stocks. 
but I I I want to remind people that I think that a lot of I think a lot of us in a, in a minority communities are really going to continue to probably invest in our businesses. I think that that's one of the things that's probably going to be most mm. people people are going to be betting on themselves and their own brands. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. I think that's what you're going to see more and more is people betting on their own brands and betting on themselves a lot more. Mm-hmm. Now. Like you said, everybody wants to do the Toro, this and that. Mm-hmm. I would encourage people while doing that to keep your spending costs very low. Mm-hmm. I'm going to encourage people. This is smart move. I'm going to encourage people that stop doing that. Now, if I go to Linux Mall in the middle of the week, it's not that many people there. Yep. In 2020, 2021, they had to install metal detectors because they couldn't keep people out of there trying to shoot at people. So what I'm going to tell people is, is like, guys, please be patient. And please be mindful of the way that you're spending your money. I think our people right now, one thing I will say, I don't want our people to get exhausted from trying different things. Stick with one thing and continue to stick with it. If you want to do wholesaling, you want to do real estate, stick with it. If your one year or two didn't work out, stick with it. Keep sticking with it. If you want to do Turo, continue to stick with it. But also I would say some balance and some diversification. Cool. Credit is key. Keep your credit clean. Yep. Good advice. Remember the the panther is patient while it's hunting. <laughs> yes, sir. Good advice. Good to have you, man. Thanks for joining nah, us. I appreciate us. that. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, I got I got like an either or question. You oh. just choose, choose either or. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my bad. My uh, bad. My bad. My, no, my, my that's my fault. Okay. Oh, um, go ahead. Little baby or gunner? Wham, little baby. Robin Hood or TD Ameritrade? TD Ameritrade. Trading or long term investing? Long term investing. Stocks or crypto? Stocks. Crypto or ETF? ETF. Book smart or street smart? Mm, Street smart. Uh, Miami Heat or the Knicks? Miami Heat. Uh, Troy or Rashad? (laughs) She crazy. (laughs) Both. (laughs) Both. (laughs) The good brothers that earn your leisure. Both. (laughs) Jay Morrison or MGM Mortgage Guy? MGM Mortgage Guy. Uh, Paula McCarthy or CEO Maddie J? Paula McCarthy. Uh, stocks or bonds? Stocks. Rental property or Airbnb? Rental property. Stocks or NFTs? Stocks. Earn your leisure or, or breakfast club? Earn your leisure. Uh, money or equity? Equity. Two million followers or one rental property. You said two million followers or rental property? Yeah. Just one rental property? Just one rental property. Two million followers. followers yeah, all day. Um, 850 credit score or a million dollars? 850 credit score. Charting and technical analysis by Fred McAllen or trading in a zone by Mark Douglas? Oh, oh that's a... Oh, I'm going to have to go... Ah, oh, man, that's... I'm gonna go Mark Douglas trading in his own. Okay. That's my last question, King. Jordan Avenue. 